actually Gibbo set it up last weekend Sorry. at the event, so it's mm. cool. Fine. Um, and you know, even if one or two the kids want to come in, it's just the, they don't bring this many. But, <laughs> <laughs> but just the golden rule is obviously whoever's in there just shh. Yeah. Phones on but, silent. Um, but yeah, and otherwise in the production area here, you can sit there where you can hear it all and see it all. Find out. Think the about it. Yes. This is the catch up with oh, Mike Gibson. Oh, here we go. Thanks for your company. Easter Saturday afternoon, just ticking over to seven minutes past two. It's good to be with you here in the 6PR studio for another hour of the program for our boxing champ, Julian. We've got some intro music. Here we go. Boney M. I don't think I've ever heard this song, but this is perfect because my guest in the studio, real name Louisa Horton, Boxing name Bang Bang Lulu. That's where you obviously got the name from. What up? What up? How are you going? <laughs> I'm going really well. How are you? I didn't get my name from there, but I'm doing great. Thank you. Where'd you get? Well, Bang Bang Lulu. <laughs> it actually goes back to my skating days. Ah, we'll yes. get onto that in just a moment. Absolutely. Thank you for coming into the studio, though. There's your bony M, Bang Bang Lulu. Uh, you. Now your real name is Louisa, but everyone calls you Lulu, right? Lulu, yeah. Please. Lulu. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a radio interview where we've had two world title belts sitting on the desk in the studio. Thank you for bringing them in. Awesome, man. I'm glad I could be your first. That's pretty cool. These are, uh, we're talking, listeners, the big, heavy WBC world title belts sitting on the desk. Yep. There's uh, not really too many of them going around in Australia. Absolutely. With mental health issues, I um, was clinically depressed for a while. And that really hit me really, really hard. Like right now I see it as a gift because now I can speak about it and hopefully open up the doors for other people to come forward or have the courage to speak up about what they're going through. But in the time, like I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Like it's, it is a real, a real illness. So I went through that. I had my two beautiful children, Eli and Estelle, in that time. But I think I suffered from clinical depression for a uh, depression for about a year and a half and then it kind of being around family and friends really really helped me but then I kind of felt really lost for the years in between and what I mean by lost is I didn't know like I was so grateful to be a mum and spent time with my children in that way but I would always say that there's something inside of me I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And I'm sure Chris, my ex-partner, had to listen to it all the time, you know, but I didn't know that it wasn't it wasn't that hard to find really. But I guess part of my depression was as an athlete and an elite athlete was stepping away from something that I did every single day. So when I didn't know my focus or my purpose, I didn't really know what I was supposed to do. In you know. And um I think skateboarding definitely gave me that and that lifestyle of waking up every day and training. Well, not that I would call it training while I was skating, but um, it gave me purpose and direction of what I wanted to achieve and my dreams. And then because I kind of fell short, I felt like I failed. But also when I went through my depression, I think it's really hard as an elite athlete to be open about that. And um, I didn't want to be perceived as weak. You know, because I'm out there doing, you know, living the dream of what some, you know, the skaters that I grew up with would have dreamed to be doing. But you know now, don't you, that Absolutely. you can be physically strong yeah. and but mental illness is not a sign of weakness and no. you're still incredibly strong and it doesn't exactly. matter. Yeah. Tell me then, you ended up in the US. Yep. And uh, how did you become world champion? Ah, oh, man, I, well, I set out to become a world champion from the get-go and, um, I was able to fight here in Perth for the WBO Asia Pacific title which led me into being able to get the opportunity to fight for the WBO world title in Japan. Um, I went there and dominated Japan and shocked a few people I think because I don't think I was meant to win because you know when we travel outside of our own country that we're the underdog. Mm. So it's not as easy to get the wins when we travel. And then coming back from that I... Um, got the opportunity to go over to the US. I met Elvis Grant and that's how I was able to go over there. So he opened up some doors for me in the US and I was based in LA, well in California. 
and yeah, I spent the last three years out there training and fighting in the US. So um, really epic part of part of my journey, I guess, mm -hmm. and yeah. which was one of the hardest, most challenging things mm -hmm. that I've had to do. Um, yeah, there were times when I would just miss them so bad that I'd be doing my work, but tears would be flowing out of my eyes. But you know, it's all for some greater greater reason and. Being able to come back to Perth and work together with a great team. I have Marcus here now working with me and a great team behind me, Soa, and you know, it's it's awesome and I've got Daniel Dawson who's a big impact here in Perth with the martial arts. So we are wanting to put on the WBC fight here in Perth. Yeah, so how did this happen? Because as the world champion, someone has gone and challenged you. She wants your crown. Yeah. So you've got to have a world title fight. Yeah, so this will be like a mandatory fight between uh, Fabiana and myself. Her name's Fabiana, guys. She's Czech. <laughs> She's Czech Republic. So I've been wanting this fight for quite a, quite a while as well. So the opportunity to be able to fight her and it's a dream of mine also to be able to come back to Perth and light up a stadium for my fans and excite them like I've been exciting people in the States because I haven't been able to fight here since 2015. Mm. So it's very important for a boxer in the morning. That's our endurance. That's our gas in the ring. Um, and then in the evenings it's skills work or sparring. So it's pretty intense but you know yeah. what? There's moments in training camp when I'm cutting weight and I'm getting close to the fight and you just like get a bit teary sometimes but it's all part of it. Like it's the blood, sweat and tears and I love it all. You're amazing. Five yeah. foot one. I bet you've been called Pocket Rocket a few times yeah. in your career. You're a bundle of energy, an infectious smile and personality to go with incredible uh, athletic achievements. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. Good luck Thank for this you. title fight. Awesome. Bringing it to Perth. We're going to get it on, Let's get go. it locked in, Let's get the go. money behind you and all of that, and then go beat that woman from the Czech Republic. That's it. And then, you know what, after we'll uh, hang out later. Exactly. We'll That's talk it. about it all again. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in, Lulu. You cool. and the team. Uh, we've got documentary crew in tow. We've got yep. the whole bit going on in here. Uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's uh, Lulu. Bang, bang, Lulu. In fact, you'll remember that name now. And you'll hear her when she's fighting for a world title right here in Perth, hopefully in July. 28 minutes to 3. Every Sunday morning on 6 p.m. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, well so well, 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 well spoken with all of that. That was great. Really good.